Yesterday was the last day of the rest of our lives. Yesterday was the day Sam Altman asked his ego this three-word question. What have we done? Because yesterday was the day the human intelligence monopoly officially ended, with the long-awaited release of OpenAI's GPT-5, the first AI model to outperform biological humans on the Simple Bench benchmark. Meanwhile, it's quickly overtaking virtually every leaderboard on LM Arena, which means every programmer that still has a job will be getting a layoff notice shortly. Or at least that's what the hype engineers at OpenAI I want you to think. Not everybody is falling for it though. That simple bench score was just a rumor, and in fact, GPT-5 is actually in fifth place. GPT-5 failed to beat Grok on the ARC AGI benchmark, an important benchmark that was conveniently left out of yesterday's announcement. It also underwhelmed the betting markets, and OpenAI is no longer the favorite to have the best model of 2025. Worst of all though, people found numerous problems with OpenAI's own charts, which really shouldn't happen when you have PhD level intelligence in your pocket. In today's video, we'll find out if GPT-5 is just another overhyped incremental upgrade or a true game changer edging us closer to artificial superintelligence. It is August 8th, 2025, and we're watching The Code Report. In the past, GPT got better as it got bigger. It was trained on more data that would activate more parameters when generating text. But those days are essentially over. The thing that makes GPT-5 special is not that it's a bigger, smarter model, but rather it unifies multiple models, like fast, reasoning, routing, etc., to pick the right tool per task without the end user needing to think about it. In many ways, GPT-5 feels more like a consolidation and cost reduction effort after they spent the last year panic shipping a bunch of stupidly named models to justify the $200 pro plan. Speaking of cost though, GPT-5 is priced at only $10 per million output tokens. And that's a great deal compared to Claude Opus 4.1, which will burn a hole in your wallet at $75 per million output tokens. Sam Altman says GPT-5 is like having multiple PhD level experts in your pocket, but but one of the funniest parts of their announcement is that their benchmark graphics were presented with a y-axis that doesn't make any sense. And there can only be two possible explanations for this error. One, they vibe charted with GPT-5 and it doesn't actually have PhD level intelligence. Or two, they were trying to be intentionally misleading. What's even better is that GPT-5 is supposed to have lower deception rates, but then someone or something tried to deceive us with the y-axis on the deception benchmark. And that's kind of embarrassing for a $500 billion intelligence company. But if you're a programmer, the biggest question is whether or not GPT-5 can code a Svelte 5 to-do app with runes. Many models have come close but none have succeeded. I put GPT-5 to the test and was stunned to see that it generated beautiful looking spell code and did so very quickly, far faster than any other reasoning model. At first, I thought I was working with a PhD level spell developer, but I would soon be disappointed after running the code and getting a 500 error as the UI. What's troubling is that GPT-5 used the right syntax, but tried to use a rune in the template, which is not allowed. GPT-5 is supposed to have fewer hallucinations, but it hallucinated its own rules for using runes. However, it did redeem itself when I asked if it knew what was wrong with its code, at which point it figured it out and fixed it. And the end result is a functional app that has a very nice looking UI. I also had it build a flight simulator game with 3JS which turned out pretty bad, but the tall guy from Cursor said it's the smartest model they've ever used. Unfortunately though, I don't think GPT-5 is going to take my job or euthanize me anytime soon, because it's clear at this point that the real power comes when you combine these new AI tools with existing technologies that you already know and love, which is why you need to check out Dreamflow, the sponsor of today's video. It's a full-stack AI development environment created by the team at Flutterflow that lets you build, run, and deploy cross-platform apps all from your browser. You can spin up a new project with a prompt, and it'll run directly in Dreamflow, where you'll get full file system access, along with the ability to preview and edit all of your pages and components, either by using their visual editor or manually changing the code yourself. It integrates seamlessly with Firebase and Supabase, and also lets you deploy to the web or the app stores with a single click. If someone would have shown me this when I was first getting into Flutter back in 2018, my brain would have exploded, but you can try out Dreamflow for free with the link below. This has been The Code Report, thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one.